I just wanted to uh, clarify. I had a, a journeyman bring up a question that was on his test, and the question was if I had a half horsepower motor, and the details that he gave me were kind of a, a little slim, so I'm, I'm going to have to assume that, that it's 115 volt or 120 volt motor at single phase, but that, that makes the most sense as far as answers uh, go. So here, here's what I know about the question, and I, I'll tell you, uh, you know, that with a little bit of a hesitation. Might be a little bit different, but I think this is pretty accurate. Questions asking uh, on a branch circulation. What's the biggest breaker amperage or breaker ampacity? What the large, what's the largest size breaker can I put on a motor that's a half horsepower, 120 volt that's got a, a number 12 wire running to it? Uh, it, when he asked me that question originally or initially, my gut reaction was, well, I mean, uh, you know, the articles that they control this, just for your record, are going to be 240.4D, uh, 240.4G, which is the exclusion of things that are excluded from the small conductor rule, which is what 240.4D is, and then uh, 430.248, which is on page 350 of your code book, and uh, then, of course, the uh, uh, table that's on page 335, which is 430.52, okay? All right, so when I first had this question, when you first asked me that, my initial reaction was, well, all right, the small conductor rule says that on number 12 wire, the largest breaker I could put on it would be a 20-amp breaker. Most of you guys would guess that as an answer. Most of you guys would, would think that that's probably the correct answer as, as far as it goes. Um, but there's a couple of issues with that answer. First and foremost, Motor loads are specifically excluded from the rule that says that I can't put anything bigger than a 20 amp breaker on number 12 wire. So 240.4D tells me that 20 amps is the biggest I can put on number 12 uh, AUG conductor. However, on the next page over on, uh, let's see, that's, uh, that's, that's page probably 97. Let me double check just to make sure I give the right page number. It's 240.4G. If you catch your code book, you might as well just open it up and kind of follow along with me here. Um, 240.4G, which is going to be on page 96. So it's a small little table right there on the uh, corner of the page there, and you'll notice that I've got mine highlighted specifically showing that specific conductor applications under motor motor control circuit conductors, anything calculated under parts two of article 430, which is where we size branch circuit conductors for a motor. That, that's the, the article that, that controls most general motor uh, applications when we're sizing conductors uh, for them. It tells me that I am allowed to use the ampacity of the 75 degree column. That article reference would be 110.14C4. That's a uh, temperature limitations of a branch circuit conductor, or branch circuit, excuse me, in general. Allows me to assume a 75 degree rating of the terminals in a motor application. So I'm allowed to use a 75 degree ampacity. And if you look on page 161, which is 310.15B16, that's on page 161, you'll notice that there's three columns there. And under the 75 degree column, for a number 12 conductor, we've got a 25 amp ampacity. Now, Article 240.4D tells me I'm, I'm, mat, I'm, I'm, I'm mat, uh, maxed out at a 20 amp size. For overcurrent protection device, when I the size of a branch circuit, I'm running number 12 conductor to it. But I'm allowed to exclude motor calculations from that artificial rule that's under 240.4D under the table on the next page, which is G. It says I can put a 75 amp capacity on that conductor, which means I can put a 25 amp breaker as a maximum size overcurrent device to protect conductors in that case, you know, on a, a motor application. So I'm looking at 25 amps on a number 12 wire. However, this question is really not talking about the wire. What this question is asking me about is a branch circuit or conductor, uh, uh, excuse me, <laughs> let me, let me rephrase that. It, what this question is asking me about is not about the branch circuit conductor. What the question is asking me about is the overcurrent protection device for the actual motor itself. They're, now they're just telling me as a added on you know, additional details that it happens to be that I've sized the number 12 conductor for this half horsepower 115, 120 volt motor. But it doesn't say that that's what they're asking me to, to protect. I'm going to protect that wire actually under Article 430.32, which is my heaters, right? So kind of a, a backwards application, the thermal properties of the, of the protection in a motor application is going to be a separate 
device that we call a heater or an overload, right? That's going to be done under 430.32. So the wire, really, the wire size that they give me is just additional information that's probably there just to confuse you and, and really nothing else. What they're allowing you or asking you here is under 430.52 on page 335 of your code book, an overcurrent protection device, which is sized to protect against short circuits or ground faults for a motor, I'm going to use a, a number of 250% of the FLA value that you'll find on page 350, which is 430.248 for single phase motor. So a half horsepower motor under that FLC table, I may have said FLA, and if I did, I apologize, that's DC motors. FLC for uh, uh, AC motors on page 350, article 430. Dot, or excuse me, table 430. Dot, uh, 248, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right. So on that table, 115 volt column, it's the very first column that you'll notice. It's the smaller table that's on the left hand side of the page. So make sure that you're not accidentally using or trying to use the table. It's the larger one on the middle of the uh, page there. But it is 430. Uh, 248. It's 9.8 amps on a 115 volt column for a half horsepower motor. That's the number that I'm going to use with the table that's on page 335 to size an overcurrent protection device for short circuit or ground faults. So for the upper limit, the magnetic properties or the magnetic protection of that device is what I'm using for a motor application. I'm going to size that at 2.5%, 250%. And so on my calculator, I'm taking 9.8 amps. And I'm multiplying that times 2.5, and my calculation then ends up, it ends up being 24.5 amps is what I, I end up with on that uh, calculation. Now, for most applications, under most general trade uh, circumstances, and for anybody not taking the state of Texas PSI exam, the correct answer would be to, to then take that number and round up to the next larger size overcurrent protection device. And I would, in that case, put a 25 amp breaker on that uh, motor. Not because I'm sizing it for the wire, but because I'm sizing it to protect the actual motor for short circuit or ground faults. Now, unfortunately, for those of you taking the Texas PSI, ultimately what happens is, is that you're going to go back and look at the exception number one is where the rule that permits us to round up for a breaker for a motor. The rule, though, however, for the table on page 335, which is 430.52, under C1 on the left-hand column there, kind of toward the bottom of the page, I want you to take a minute to turn there and look at it. It's 430.52 C1. It's on the left-hand side of page 335, kind of toward down at the bottom of that left-hand column. The non-italicized portion of the text says very clearly that you may not choose an overcurrent device or make a selection larger than the calculated value according to the table under 430.52. In other words, if my calculated value is 25 point, uh, excuse me, 24.5 amps, then I, I'm not allowed to take an overcurrent device larger than that breaker. So I would then have to round that down to a breaker sized at 20 amps because that's the only rule that I have. And the reason for this, guys, is that the Texas PSI exam in the Canada Information Bulletin, this is the biggest joke they have down, and they're laughing at their asses off at you, pardon my French guys, but they're laughing at you because they know that you probably don't know what I'm fixing to tell you. In regards to exceptions on the Texas PSI electrical exam, there is an instruction in the Canada Information Bulletin that tells you unequivocally, when it comes to exceptions, you may not use them to formulate an answer unless the test question specifically directs you to use the exception. Now, I'm not clear if this question did or did not allow you or tell you or instruct you, and usually the way they do that is they say in regards to exceptions and then you know, continue on with the test question. If that question says that, then I would then take exception number one, which right immediately below that section that I just kind of paraphrased for you, they tell you, ignore what we just said in the instructions and go ahead and round up if your calculation doesn't match up. Stupidest thing in the code book. There, there's no reason for it to be worded that way. It's a confusing, uh, you know, conflicting piece if you ask my opinion. The bottom line is that in the trade, since there's no requirement for us to wait for any kind of a trigger event, we don't have to wait for the first initial setting to trip or not allow that motor to maintain its startup, you know, whatever, whatever it is, it just flat out says that, you know what, the instructions say that you can't select a larger value than your calculated value, but then they turn around and say, but if your calculation doesn't match up, go ahead and round up if you like. Now, 
you know, for the for the trade, that means that we're going to take that exception every time. There's nothing that says we can't. And so nobody in their right mind is going to size a brake, especially a fuse, on a motor application and have the sucker blow and be out fifty to hundred dollars a pop, three phases, three phase motor at, at, at your cost. When there's nothing that says you can't go ahead and round up to be on the safe side anyway. On this exam, however, unless they give me instructions to apply an exception to that rule, I have nothing but just the the C1 wording, which is the non-italics portion of that section. It says I cannot exceed that calculated value. So I'm looking at doing a rounding down normally on this test question of a 20 amp over current device. Now it might be that they may give you a 14 gauge conductor. Doesn't really matter because I'm not sizing this brake for the wire when it comes to motors. The wire protection, guys, with motors is not the breaker like you normally think of it in normal water heaters or lighting or receptacles and things of that nature where we use the breaker for both the conductors and the actual appliance itself. And in that case, that breaker is doing two things. It's got two jobs. And it's also got two things it's protecting wire, right circuit conductors, and it's also protecting whatever the equipment is. Okay? But it has two pieces of protection. It's got a thermal protection and it's got an overcurrent or a, a, a short circuit ground fault protection. And so we're talking about two different jobs or two functions of a breaker that's protecting two different pieces of, of, of uh, items in a normal application. But with motors, we split that responsibility of that breaker in half. And we only use that breaker, that overcurrent device, for the short circuit of ground fault, which is that magnetic upper limit properties. Not for the brand, uh, for the thermal properties, but the stuff that's stamped on the side of a, a breaker, the 20 amps or the 15 amps or the 30 amps, whatever that is, that's the thermal properties of that overcurrent device. And that is not what we're using that breaker for when it comes to motors. Now, let me make sure that I'm being clear so nobody misunderstands me. When it comes to motor breaker, or excuse me, a motor branch circuit, we're taking the breaker or the fuse and we're robbing it of its responsibilities or taking the responsibility of the thermal piece away from it and putting it into a separate device called an overload. That overload is the replacement of the thermal responsibilities. So the wire, which is a thermal uh, you know, issue that we're talking about, we want to make sure that conductor size large enough that uh, you know, the heat and the demand of, of three hour loads or longer loads will, will not be you know, so much that the, that the conductor overheats and creates an additional resistance value that then in turn creates even more heat. And so copper losses get bad, and possibly even have a thermal runaway effect where we have a major problem. What we're doing here is we're taking that job away from the breaker and we're installing a thermal device called an overload. And we're going to size that based on the windings of the motors as close to what that manufacturer says. And we, we'll even use nameplate values there in this case. Because we really want to try to dial that protection down as close to what that manufacturer says that sucker is rated for at the most, and that's really what we want to try to do with it. That's also, in, in, in just pure kind of happenstance, is what's protecting that conductor in, in that branch circuit, not the breaker. So you'll see a larger breaker size with wire sizes that you would never think of seeing anywhere else in the trade. The biggest breaker size I could put on a number 12 wire normally anywhere else in the trade would be a 20 amp breaker, right? With a motor though, I might have a breaker sized at 40 amps, maybe 45 amps even. And they, yes, they do make 45 amp breaker guys. They don't make 55 amps. Because I make some, nobody else does. So be careful of that. 240.4, excuse me, 240.6 is gonna be the article on page 96, 97 that gives you the listed, list of uh, uh, standard overcurrent protection by size. Okay, bottom line. My assessment of this test question is, if they don't allow exceptions, if they don't tell you to uh, you know, take the exceptions into account, a half horsepower motor, 120 volts, single phase, drawing a demand of 9.8 amps, doesn't matter to me what the wire size is, because that's not what they're asking about. What they're asking about, what's the breaker, largest breaker I'm permitted to install to protect that motor? Two different pieces. If they ask me about the overloads, and I'm talking about conductors and, and the you know lines of motors in here. I'm just talking about the actual short circuit ground fault upper limit protection of that, that device, which is going to be uh, you know the magnetic properties of it. That's that inrush current, the AIC rating, the 5,000 minimum, 10,000, uh, 22,5. I mean, they just go on and on the higher they go. Uh, and that's a whole other uh, you know blog, I guess, or video blog, or whatever you want to call this thing I'm doing, but. Uh, as, as this question stands, that 9.8 amps that you're seeing on page 350 of your code book would be multiplied times 250%, i.e. 2.5 if you're putting it into a, a, a multiplying factor, 
on page 335 under the table dot 52, I would take 9.8 times 2.5. My calculation ends up with 24.5 amps. And I would size that down on the Texas PSI because I can't take exceptions unless they tell me to specifically address them. And I would put that on a 20 amp breaker. All right. Could be a 14 gauge wire. And actually, technically, that would be the conductor at 9.8 amps. The conductor calculation, just so you know, not part of this test question, and I don't want to get you confused, but just so that you know, to size the conductor for that motor, the same half horsepower motor, I take that same 9.8 amps. And under 430.22, I would use a table value, which is what that 9.8 amps is, multiply it times 125%, and I would end up with, let's see, 9.8 times 1.25. I'm looking at 12.25 amps is what that draw is, 12.25 amps, and I would size that as a 14 gauge conductor. So 14 on conductor, possibly if they tell you to use exceptions, maybe a 25 amp breaker on that sucker. Now you can see what I mean by this being a confusing question. Hope that helps. If you have a question like that, or if any of the pieces of this come into a different question or a different type of question, hopefully you'll kind of go through this video a couple of times. I know I kind of went through it uh, fast, but I did list all the articles that you need to uh, refer to. Every single article that's listed in this video is an incredibly important one. So please spend some time, go back through this video a couple of times, watch it. And tell your friends about it. I, you know, it, it, it's got some application as far as the field goes. And just remember that, that most of the time that exception be permitted when it comes to size and stuff for a you know breaker in the field uh, that we would not necessarily be restricted to from the uh, gym. All right, my name is Mitchell Talbert, electrician testing. I do tutoring. I help guys take their uh, PSI exams. I've been doing it for eight years now, and I uh, hope this helps. And uh, good luck in the trade. Be safe, and uh, just keep keep in touch. More coming later.